Good day, this is Brad Caleb, PhD. And my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. I'm not sure if you know that a post hole digger keeps on working because we learned that the basic foundation is not always the first foundation. Once you dig deeper, you find the true foundation. And many of us have a problem that as we are watching and looking around, and particularly when we saw the insurrection of January the 6th in the United States, where Mr. Trump incited people to move up and make sure that he stayed on as the president number 45. However, his miscalculations were that people were doing exactly as he incited them. And he did not want to take responsibility because six people died or possibly more. And in general, it showed that it was not just Mr. Trump. It was a whole bunch of people that had that same mentality and it's a spirit. We recognize that once a group of people have that same spirit, we have a problem. And what is the problem? I call it the scrolls of Donald Trump. Everything he stated was a lie. But are you willing to accept the lie? What about the title, The Dead Sea Trump? scrolls or the dead trump scrolls see the dead sea revealed what the people were looking for they were looking for a group of believers that used to live in the early century at the first century when Yeshua hamashiach known to many as jesus was resurrected and he was first of course killed and then resurrected and people believed that he was the messenger he was the one sent by God. He was the Messiah. And when he came, he turned things around. But then so many years later, as a matter of fact, centuries later, we discovered that there was a problem. Because 300 years later, what Yeshua HaMashiach had started, where he said, you follow the way, the truth and the light, we now have a little problem. It is inconvenient for the politicians and politicians are people that say we do it my way we have a song that we know i do it my way it's a beautiful song but the title sounds great but if you understand what it means the spirit that it represents is awesome and our fool because when you do it your way what does it mean Usually it means that it is going to cost people's lives. And Mr. Trump did it his way. But let's go back to 325 when he did it his way. The Emperor of Rome, Constantine I, he was fed up. And politically it was not going the way he wanted to. So he decided to take the different types of beliefs in his empire and make it to what he wanted it to be. And of course, we have a major problem now because we have Jewish people that will not budge for nobody because there is only one God and not many. And so what he had to do was first successively had to kill the people that hang on to the true word of God. And as the Jewish people passed away and passed on or were killed off or murdered or they had to flee for their life, eventually a group the body of believers that used to follow Yeshua HaMashiach were now grouped together in a conclave and they were positioned the following. Either you follow our proposition or we kill you. And what was the proposition? We had a whole bunch of bishops and people that were in power, so-called at that time, and they decided to accept the terms of the emperor. The emperor, of course, was the emperor of Rome, Constantine I. He was a powerful man. Now, history will tell you all that. So I don't want to go too deep into it. But for me, 
when I originally heard about 325, it went in and it went out. In other words, I heard it and I didn't pay attention. I never thought it was an important issue. Till later in life, when I got challenged in court by people that were also from a certain belief system. See, the belief system I had to deal with was something of a different nature, yet the same. They called themselves Freemasons. My friend who had discovered that I had papers in North America and Canada that were worth a tremendous amount of dollars, knew that I had to raise millions of dollars in order to secure the paperwork. And he was a multimillionaire, so he had a beautiful home, beautiful estate, biggest house in, in London, Ontario at that time. And of course, he said, use my house, use my property. We can raise millions of dollars in no time. And this is my proposition. And he insisted that we do it his way. The only problem I had was that I had talked to some other people that had never made a million dollars in their life. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice to have a hundred people that I can bring with me and help them all become a millionaire in their own right. That was in the time that a million dollars was still a lot of money. That was 2000. And of course, as I started to work and my company started to grow, my friend was very, very negative. And he came back and he said, Bob, let's talk. And as we were talking, the following occurred. My friend's problem was he had a big ego. He was the number one person in the Freemasons, the local Freemasons, which I found out later. And we knew each other for over 10 years, but that part was never something that interested me. I did not know much about Freemasons other than it's something. But as I got to know him, I discovered that he was prepared to kill off my transaction, to do whatever it did, just to destroy me because I was not following his lead. See, he was so used as being the head of the Freemasons that people did what he wanted to do. And I didn't do that. So he threatened me. He said, you will regret this. And over a period of 12 years following, I had lost millions of dollars to lawyers, over $10 million. My properties were gone, the cars were gone, everything was gone. and. I lost basically also my freedom because I ended up in jail six years times three because I dare say no to a Freemason and it taught me so much in a way I'm very grateful it happened in a way I hated it because none of my friends stayed everyone dripped away and eventually writing it all down because in the beginning I had a hard time understanding what it was that I was facing. See, it is fun if you have a lot of money and people hang around you, they want to be part of success. But when you're on your own and when the decisions against you are piling up and it looks like you are a terrible individual, there's always one person that always, always, always loves you and always will be there. And that's called the Father. See, the Father created us with a purpose. He wanted us to be forever. But as I was exposed to all the weird stuff from the court, there's something else that I had to learn. See, there's something else that I was learning, that all that I had learned at Bible school, Sunday school, seminary, uh, preaching for 12 years in the ministry, traveling all over the world, etc., 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 and then finally settling, settling in Canada. I understood that I, as a Christian, had certain rights and obligations, but I never understood why my name was a Christian. And then I learned the hard way. I didn't want to hear it. I hated what I heard. My whole life had been a lie. But isn't that exactly what you saw yesterday when number 46, the President of the United States, was inaugurated and Mr. 45 had to leave? He tried an insurrection, but somewhere, somehow, something went wrong. Six people got killed, but not the people that he was looking for. And he had to run. He refused to go 
to the inauguration because whatever reason. But the weirdest part is, within the first 24 hours, decisions were made that would help the people and accountability had to show up. They were looking for the medication. They were looking for where everything was and there was none. It was one big lie. And guess who bought the lie? The majority of people that enabled Mr. Trump to get into power were the Christians. So another person lied to them again. First, it was Constantine the first who told them, this is what you're doing. You become Christians because we call it now the church, the Rome Catholic Church. Effective 325. Jesus never instituted the Roman Catholic Church, but the Roman Empire did. And this is where you have the problem when Catholicism or religion is spiked by people that are only out for gain. And this is the same what we find with Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump was only in for the money, for the power and for the adoration because he was a narcissist. And so we have a problem now as the church, the body of Christ. Why do we let ourselves be hoodwinked again and again and again? Why don't we go back to the basics, the foundation? What is our belief based on? Is it based on the suggestion or the recommendation of a man called Constantine the first? Because he created from out of the belief system set up that restored us with God Almighty, he made it something that was impossible to do because it became pagan religion, pagan Christianity. And then if we go back to the foundation, the true foundation of the word Christian, it turns out that Christians were around 350 years before Jesus was born. Doesn't that sound weird? So you are a Christian you think because you follow Jesus Christ. But there were Christians that had never heard of Jesus Christ and they followed Serapis, the god of the underworld. And that was during the time of Alexander the Great. Because Alexander, when he was dying, they were seeking the favor of any god. And Serapis was called the god of the underworld. And the followers were called Christians. Uh oh. Now we have a major problem. Being deceived, being hoodwinked is one, but continuing to hang on because you don't want to admit it, that's stupidity. We have now major, major problems with people that are called leaders of the Church of God, leaders of the body of Christ. I've spoken up, I've shared it with you, Kenneth Copeland, John Hakey, Sid Roth, Pat Robertson, Paula White, and many, many others. I'm not saying this because I glee. I made the same mistakes. But when you make a mistake, you repent. Don't just hang on because you are always right. Mr. Trump deceived you. You have been deceived because your foundation is not built on the rock of salvation. See, this is the biggest problem. When we dig deep down, we discover that we are not what we think we are. And if we can come back and say, Father, forgive me. Well, why is it so important not to be called a person found on the broad way, but on the narrow way? Because on the narrow way is the presence of God. And if we cannot see that, if we do not want to see that, then I have a problem. Because you and I are walking two different paths. When you walk on the broad way, I'm not going to be there. You should not be there. You call yourself a Christian because you sang your whole life, your parents went there. But folks, we need to realize, if this is what just happened with Mr. Hoodwink, Mr. Trump, the same happened with the Emperor of Rome, 325 years AD, after Christ was born. And now, 2021, we find ourselves in the same predicament. Doesn't it become time that we open our eyes? Why not admit it? 
we were wrong. Instead of going on and going on and not understanding, you're fighting a system that is doomed to fail. Folks, I urge you, God is waiting for you. He loves you. We are the prodigal sons and daughters. And if that is something we finally can come to understand, then it's awesome. But if you fail to understand that because you refuse to accept the fact that you can be wrong, then you will be in for a major, major problem. When the time comes, the Lord will have only one word for you. We have a story, and it was mentioned by Jesua HaMashiach, Jesus himself, and he talks about the ten virgins, five were wise and five were foolish, and the foolish ones had not enough oil. Now, what is the oil that God is referring to? When I asked that question when I was young, because I heard the story since I was six years of age or, or even younger, but that is where I remember, six years old, I knew the story about the ten virgins, five wise and five foolish. The foolish ones, I was told, they did everything that the world was offering, but no, that isn't the case. Some of them were very religious, some of them they went to church every day praying, bringing the little candle, burning a candle, praying for all the souls, doing all the right stuff. But what God is looking for is that we do what he says. Be on that narrow way. And what was the narrow way? That was called the way, the truth, and the light. And the light that shines through us, that is when we act according what God wants us to do. That means that we have a covenant of with God. The Ten Commandments were a covenant. They were not commandments. Those were the basic things we needed to have in our lives in order to be allowed in the kingdom of God. But since nobody wants to listen and they do it their way, they become commandments. And each time you fail the commandment, guess what happens? You owe a debt. And who do you think you owe the debt to? The debt is owed to Satan. And that is why we have a pandemic, because he is calling in his debt. God is not giving you this debt. He wants you protected. He wants you to be safe. He is your father. But if you refuse and you go foolishness like a man, like Trump, and you follow him because he promised you the moon and he gives you nothing, then of course you are naked. You've got nothing left. And it hurts. And it is terrible what is happening. 400,000 people have died so far in the United States and 4,000 a day are following. And they are finding and discovering there is nothing what Mr. Trump was supposed to have done. And folks, what if this is the day that the Lord says we will be showing up before him? What do we say? Father, this is what I've done for you. But God said, why weren't you on the way? Oh, nobody told me. Well, I'm telling you, folks, we are the people that are invited to be on the way, the truth and the light, because that is the path where God personally will teach you. His presence is there. That is where we will be restored. Restorative justice can take place. But if we refuse, we will go worse and worse. We don't need to work on the third temple. See, that temple was a little secret that I'd like to share with you. You know where the temple is? That is built in your house, in your life. And when that temple comes to fruition and the beauty of its holiness, that is what will please God. The light is the love of God. It's time that you do things to honor the Lord, to glorify the Lord. That is what will be awesome. And that will give God pleasure. And he will say, well done, you good and faithful servant. But if you are just following Mr. Trump and all the baloney comes, that comes with it, of course you will be crying. Of course you will find out that you're in the middle of worse and worse problems than you've ever been before. It's not a prediction that I will, that I like, but the unfortunate path is there is a small path and there's a broad way. And folks, you are walking the broad way if you do not open your eyes. Do I say it was glee? No. It hurts me. 
And I know what it takes in order to turn around. Because a lot of the stuff that you have been fed is nonsense. But folks, it's still not too late. We can still turn around. But please, pay attention. And remember, tough times never last. But tough people, they do. God bless you. Bye for now.